Hi there, my name is Agustin Caruso and welcome to Our Station. So in this episode, I'm going to tackle one of the most controversial topics in the web design circle, which is Webflow versus WordPress. Which one is better and why? Before we go any further, I want to know about you guys. What do you think is better? Write down in the comments down below. Let's create a healthy discussion. So I started my web design career back in 2014 when I was living in Montreal, Canada, and I was working on a startup accelerator and I was using WordPress. So I use WordPress for my, for my job, I use WordPress for my personal projects, and I use WordPress later for my clients. But then once I came back to Brazil, I actually uh, started chasing digital marketing instead of web design. So I didn't have time to, to research tools and to be in the vanguard of the web design movement. So I, I ended up falling off of grace. And it was not until 2019 where I was able to rekindle my love for web design and it was all thanks to Webflow. And that's what I want to talk today in this discussion between WordPress and Webflow, which one is better and why, my personal opinion. And I want to let you, I want to tell you guys why is it that Webflow helped me rekindle my creative fire and also kind of save my relationship. But that's a story for another day. So let's get started. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to present a list of pros and cons for each software. And at the end, I'm going to give you a verdict with my personal opinion on which one is best. So for WordPress, in a list of pros, number one is freedom. You can build anything you like. You're not constrained by structure, right? So you can build inside of it and outside of it because it is open source. So by the, the, its own nature, you're available to build anything you like. Number two is its SEO tools. So there's a thing that a lot of uh, developers and designers mention that it is Google loves uh, WordPress. That's not actually true, but what it is true is that WordPress uh, has a lot of, of tools that we can use to improve the SEO of our website for sure. So that, that doesn't mean that WordPress websites are going to rank better than Webflow, but it means that we have more tools to our disposal, tools such as Yoast SEO. And mentioning tools, we couldn't uh, leave it outside that when we're talking WordPress, we're talking plugins. And I mean tons and tons and tons of plugins. And at the same time that plugins are one of the uh, main selling points of WordPress, they're also one of the biggest negatives, which I'm going to mention in a second. All right. Fourth point is the community. The community is huge. WordPress has been around for years and years and years. And if you have a question, more likely than not, there's going to be 10 answers for that, all right? And the last one is the possibility of hosting. You can host it wh whatever you like. You can host it on your own computer, on your own servers. You can you can host it in a, in a cheap server, right? Uh, you're not bound to the, their own, like WordPress don't, doesn't have their own hosting just like Webflow does, right? So this is a pro for WordPress. Now, when we're talking about cons, the first thing that comes to mind is that it's not very user friendly, right? And I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say when I started using this, I, I had to learn WordPress because it was my job, right? But I, so I had to dig into a ton of tutorials. It was not easy. And after a while I got used to the dashboard, right? But the second point, which is poor editing experience for clients, it means that not being user friendly, it's actually uh, something bad for you as a, as a business owner, right? Uh, as a freelancer, because your client is not going to have a good time uh, actually accessing all of the, um, like all of the menus, all of the, all of the buttons, all of the hierarchy, all of the tabs, like we got used to it, right? But our clients, it's not as easy uh, to them uh, as it is for us, right? And now when I was mentioning about plugins, as it is a pros with WordPress, it's actually, it is also at the same time a con because of the vulnerability issues because every single plugin is possibly a door is a backdoor to our website so that means that if you don't keep up with your website if you don't keep updating the theme or the plugins you may have a possible hacking or maybe even your website might come down right it's going to be offline 
and like that's that's awful like you don't know how many times i have been delivering websites for clients and you always have that thought in the back of your mind like okay ho hopefully the, like did i remember to to update all, all the all the plugins did i remember to update all the themes so you don't have a lot of ease of mind when you're using wordpress and that also ties in with the with the high maintenance point that i'm making right here for the same reasons right and the last one is that you need to have a high knowledge so you need to have a, a deep knowledge in the, in the entire infrastructure of wordpress right and i mean and what do i mean by that i mean that you cannot i mean you can start by just grabbing a theme and then delivering and modifying that theme and then hosting it with uh, uh with godaddy and delivering it to your clients but you know that that website's not going to be fast right it's not going to be very customizable it's going to be hard for your for your client to access it because it has a poor editing experience so that's the minimum you can do but good web, uh, WordPress developers actually deliver something that could be amazing, could be fast, could be easy to use, very customizable, that solves your customer problem. But you need to have a very high knowledge in order to do that, right? And I think that's one of the biggest difference between WordPress and Webflow. And that's what I'm going to talk right now. When we're talking about Webflow, the pros, the first thing that I would say is that it's very, very designer friendly. And it's not only very friendly for you, but it's also friendly for your client. So because it's super easy to come in for, for your customer and then just, just to see the website, click on a text, modify it, click on a color, modify it. It's very visual, right? Uh, for my personal experience, my clients love using Webflow and they hate using WordPress, right? So you do need to take that into consideration. And also for us, right? I'm a visual guy. I learn mostly by by my eyes right and if i am working in an environment and in a, in a developing environment that it's not very easy on the eyes like it's very complex I, I get very easily overwhelmed right and in the same vein here as it is designer friendly it's also very very fast to to develop inside of it and i think it comes down that the like let's say i have an idea and i can bring that to production in a fast manner like would i don't need to have a ton of knowledge on the back end and how things work how the infrastructure works like i don't even know how to code right i'm not saying you you, you don't need to learn how to code but to to be a good webflow uh, designer you don't need to be a good developer right so that's one of the big main difference that that there is between webflow and wordpress and the other thing is that as they take uh, care of every single thing on their end, right? Like this, their servers, their code, their updates, there are no uh, plugins that you can install. So you don't have to be thinking about if you updated it, like it's all on their end. There's, it's very, very low maintenance. So you, I, like, it's very, very relaxing to know that when, as soon as I finish a website, I can just deliver it to a, a client and I know it's going to be online and that's gonna, I know they're going to be taken care of and I know it's not going to be offline. And I don't need to think about the plugins that I updated, I didn't update, vulnerability issues, is, is the website up, is the website down? Like, I don't have to think about any of that, right? And it's in the same vein, it's also more secure. When we're talking about uh, WordPress, you can act, you as a hacker, you can access it to plugins, through themes, through your own hosting if you did something that's very bad, right? Like, you just type dash WP admin and, and some people are actually still have their websites up with the, the password that's admin admin. So that's very, very insecure. And on Webflow, they're actually handling all of that. So it's of course going to be more secure. The other thing is that they're always updating, right? I would say like once every week or once two weeks, uh, they have uh, something new. And sometimes it's a small change like bug fixes. And another th times it's something that's big and that changes the whole game. And so I love them because they they're always keeping up uh, keeping us updated in the loop. Like they they uh, they have an amazing uh, support and tutorials. So the entire community around Webflow, the the, the business as Webflow uh, manages, it's very very friendly for designers, and they they have <laughs> super funny tutorials. So they look like good guys, right? But let's keep talking about us designers, right? So the, the other pro I would say is that you can have, you can create a full, full, fully custom CMS. So you can create a blog post, you can create authors, you can create a carousel for products. So it's basically limitless, but it, it is limitless inside their own infrastructure. So I'm going to mention that as a con in a second. Another important thing is that you don't need to have a lot of knowledge 
right? To deliver an amazing experience in Webflow. So that was one of the things that brought me back to the web design game, which is I was tired. Like I didn't have time to go into into WordPress and 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 start researching and start updating and start like trying to keep up with the with my servers with my competition so it, it was a lot of information that i would need to go to to start studying and instead when webflow presented itself to me <laughs> it sounds like it was a divine intervention it could be uh, all i needed to do was okay i want to create this uh, example website visually so Webflow just gives me the tool to do that without needing to understand like how servers work and how I'm going to do the hosting and, and stuff like that. And that's, I think that's one of the beauties of it. And the last one is also the showcase at the community where you can uh, actually copy uh, a website when, and recreate it inside of your own Webflow. And their community is very visually and artistically rich. And that's what I love about it. Now, let's talk about cons first one is that you cannot build outside its source code right because they own it right so you cannot uh, you can make amazing custom websites until a certain point like as soon as you start uh, as soon as soon as it was the moment in wordpress where you needed a plugin that's it you cannot achieve it in webflow it doesn't matter how beautiful how beautiful and fast it is you can't make like projects where you will need a plugin in wordpress that it's easy as that right just like e-commerce, e e-commerce is a big example. Like they're, they're, I think in 2020, they're actually starting to focus more on e-commerce, but it was very, very lacking. So I would say that they are, they are of course, updating it all the time, but they are still lacking. And that's, yeah, they lack a lot of functionality. So that, that's the thing you can create uh, without code, right? So you can create visually, you can create CMS, you can, um, you can create animations. That's a, that's another thing that I didn't put here. You can create amazing animations without knowing how to be an animator, without using a third-party software. Or so that's uh, something that I really love about Webflow. But they're still lacking, right? So I don't think it's for everyone. That's why I'm why I'm I'm even doing this video, right? Because why why I'm not titling this video like why is Webflow better than WordPress, just like a Rand Siegel of Flux did, right? Because I don't believe it's for everyone. I think it's for people that actually want to develop fast, right? And for people that are, are, are more visual learners. And one of the other things that I don't recommend Webflow for anyone, for everyone, is that they have a very expensive hosting. So much so that Webflow itself teaches you how you're supposed to pitch the hosting to your clients. So yeah, it's, it, it's getting harder to justify to your clients. Even though, like on the other hand, they allow you to export your code to other hosts, but it, it doesn't come with the CMS. So, like, what's yeah, like what's the goal on that? I have a lot of clients that are very happy to pay the Webflow hosting, but I, I also have some of them that don't want to, right? So then you're losing the entire functionality of the CMS, which was one of the selling points. So that's the thing. Webflow, it's not perfect, but it did rekindle my love for designing because I don't need to think about the databases, the infrastructures, and I, I don't need to be a highly knowledgeable developer. I can just be a happy designer that d delivers value to my clients through an awesome and functioning website. And I don't need to think about it like the entire day, right? After I deliver it. So here's my verdict. I ramble a lot, I know. Bear with me. The reality, yes. You can create websites that are more complex, customized, faster, and better in WordPress than in Webflow. That's a reality. But you need to be a master of all of its aspects, meaning coding, design, plugin management, server hierarchy, security protocols, DNS, and so forth. So obviously there's the argument that you do need to know coding a technical infrastructure setup. And I agree, of course, like, as it is without a doubt turn you, will turn you into an excellent professional. But what I love about Webflow is the speed of implementation. From idea to delivery, everything is done smoothly inside of the same system, the same infrastructure. So I can man manage all of my clients from the same dashboard. And it's a very nice visual experience. And I'm a visual learner, so I get very easily overwhelmed. I can't stay at that enough. And with Webflow, I can focus mostly on the visual and design aspect of my work. And that saves me tons of, ton of time that I can put into marketing myself, 
and, and doing other personal projects, such as this channel. So it was that ease of use that helped me to get back in the game, where I could, uh, where I could have an idea in the morning and then have working website in the afternoon. So if you ask me, I think we should learn both. So we can become even better professionals and we can bring more value to our customers, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what we do. These, they are only tools in our arsenal to help our customers to achieve their goals and their dreams. So they don't care what we use as long as we get the job done, right? So use the one that you feel more comfortable with. Use the one that allows you to create awesome websites you are proud of. So that's it for today. If you're interested in learning more about Webflow, I have a couple of tutorials in my channel, so please consider subscribing. Until the next time, stay awesome.